Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Susilowati. I'm an excellent Power BI enthusiast with decades of business experience. I publish weekly video on YouTube every Thursday, sharing tips and techniques on how to work smarter and not harder. In this video, I'd like to share with you the most important step that you must do before you start building your own visualization in a Power BI report that you inherit from other people. If you skip this step, then you are taking a big risk that your report may not be accurate. And remember, accuracy is super, super important. You can present a beautiful looking report, but if the data and information is not accurate, then the report is meaningless. I will be using the PBIX report from last week to illustrate the concept in this video. If you'd like to download the PBIX file, please refer to the link in the description below. Essentially, the most important thing that you must do before you start building your own Power BI visualization is to understand your data. There are six steps that I always do. Step one, go to the model view. Tidy up the model so that you have an understanding of how many fact and dimensions table as well as the relationship between these tables. This is an example of the sales and marketing Power BI report that I downloaded earlier from Power BI Service. How beautiful is this? Now before we start using this report, it's good habit to send check first. And my first step is going to the model view. So click the model view and take a moment to understand the relationships amongst the table. It's very important to be able to distinguish the dimension tables and the fact tables. So we have two fact tables in here, sentiment and sales fact. How do I know that they are fact table? The easiest way to identify fact table is by looking at the table that has got the most stars. So in here, there are three stars in the sentiment, two stars in sales, and in sales, we have units and revenue, and in sentiments, we have various score. So presumably, this is maybe customer satisfaction. And the dimension tables are basically tables that store things like dates or category, things that we can slice the sales table by. For example, we can say, revenue by date, revenue by manufacturer, revenue by product, and revenue by geography. Now in this model, it's a little bit unusual because we've got product, which is a dimension table, but it also has one to many relationship with category and manufacturer. Sometimes that we really should try to avoid next time. It's better to have a star schema because it just makes the decks easier. But let's just leave it as is. And we have two tables on the right in here. And this is KPI table. This is probably where the KPI or the measures has been defined. Now, if you download this report from Power BI and your tables are not looking like this, my recommendation is to tidy them up so that you have the dimension on top and then the KPIs or measure tables on the right and the fact table at the bottom. It's just so much easier to visualize and understand the relationships when everything is neat. Step two, go to data view. Peruse each table so that you have clarity on which items are calculated field versus standard field. Click data. You will see on the right, a list of tables. The one at the bottom are the dimension tables and the two on tops are the fact table. And then on the left in here are the rows within selected tables. So if you click category, which is the selected one at the moment, you can see four rows. Click date. Now that's showing what's inside the table and then so on and so forth. And notice as well, you can open or close each table. When you open and close, notice that there are various sign in here. So when there is nothing next to the field name, it means that it's the original data field. It is a standard field that came from the data source. Whereas when you see a calculator 
sign in here, it means that there is a DAX that has been written. For example, it's count A product, table product field. In other words, count the number of unique products. Step three, know your measures. Go to the largest fact table and identify the main measures contained in this table. And then take note of other relevant measures that exist throughout the model. Sometimes they are grouped in measure table and sometimes they are calculated and scattered around. I'm selecting sales fact table and I can see that there are 1.3 million rows and I'm going to select sentiment table and I can see there is only 21,000 rows. I'm going to spend a bit more time in the sales fact table. I will open by clicking that button and now I can see what's the original standard fields coming from the data source and the various calculated measures or columns. Yeah, actually they're all measures. So there are some indicators. When you click that, you can read the DAX based on some category complete share and other indicators based on units okay there's some space lots of stuff i'm just going to browse through them and we have sales okay that's a key one and we have sentiment gap etc in units and various stuff that uses total units so i'm just going to see what's in total units oh it's just the sum of units and then everything else seems to be unit related And then let's have a brief look at sentiment table. Okay, the main measures are score and the sum of score, the average of score and the sum of score. Yeah. And we also have other measures scattered around, such as this KPI. Yep, so we have some categorization, which is based on some criteria linked to units year to date. And then that's linked to category volume etc. Step 5. Create simple reference tables to create a bird's eye view of the main measures. For example, total sales and units sold by year. Let's go to report view, click reports. Let's insert a page, call it sense check, and let's insert a table. Let's put year and the key measure such as sales and units those are the measures that we found in the largest fact table earlier and those are also the measures that's being referenced in here they're all talking about sales and in here it's also sales step six Sand check the table against your existing reports. This can be us comparing the information with other existing tabs or visualization built by other people in Power BI, or perhaps with other existing non Power BI report in your organization. If the totals are the same, good. If the totals are different, then we need to pause and seek to understand why they're different. Take the time to investigate the reason. Do we have the same assumption, same inclusion, same exclusions? Take the time to document your finding. Personally, I like to add glossary or note page in every Power BI report that I built so I can document key assumptions as well as reason of known variances and make them available for future users to read. Now that we have our Sandshack table, let's compare the information in here against our Power BI reports that we get from Power BI Surface. Total sales only 32,000. Hmm, seems low. We have millions in here. Let's look at what is it filtered by. So I highlight that filter button and you can see running year is one and only four segments are selected. So let's replicate that in our Sandshack table. I'm going to add segment into the date and I am going to only select the four which is convenience, extreme, moderation and regular. And then 
I'm going to add a filter and I'll be add running here. And I will change that into drop down so that we can then select. Okay. All right. Our sales should be 332 million and the unit is 32,000. Oops. Hmm. Is that a coincidence? Where does that come from? From KPI 01. Let's trace through KPI 01. And let's look at the DAX. Look at that. This DAX is referencing units instead of sales. No wonder this amount seems low. So can you see how having a sand check table, which becomes our source of truth, allows us to easily sand check the other tabs in the Power BI reports and giving us a sense of bearing to check whether that's too high or too low. So those are the six steps that I always do to improve accuracy. See you next time.